With Uber Reserve, good things come to those who plan ahead. Family vacay? Reserve your ride as soon as you book your flights. To all the planners, now you can reserve your Uber ride up to 90 days in advance. See Uber app for details. Hi, I'm Alexis Ohanian. You may know me as one of the co-founders of Reddit, but more recently, a large part of my identity is being a father to my wonderful daughters. In my podcast, Business Dad, I hope to open the conversation about working parents a bit. You'll get to hear from a wide range of business dads, from Rain Wilson and Guy Raz to Todd Carmichael and Shane Battier, to find out how they balance being a dad with a successful career. Business Dad is available now, so be sure to listen and subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Welcome back to Thanks for Coming In. I'm your host, Jillian Clare. If you're tuning in for the first time, welcome to the show where I make actors tell me stories that broke their hearts um, and sometimes really funny stories and, and happy stories and everything in between. Story time. Welcome to story time. Today on the show, I have Alex Weiss. You may know him from Indoor Boys or Bold and the Beautiful, or maybe you saw him on Broadway in Waitress or Spring Awakening. He is amazing and fabulous and so talented and so humble, and I loved talking with him. So here's that conversation with Alex Weiss. Hi. Hello. How are you today? I'm, you know, just fine. It's just another another lovely day of quarantining. <laughs> and, you know, we're I'm still I'm still kicking, so it's an okay day. Still doing it. Are you quarantining in LA or New York? Uh I've been in New York this whole time. So I'm I'm one of the brave souls who's um stayed on the front lines. And wow. uh you know, and it's actually I, I mean, I'm not sure when people will be listening to this, but, uh, but as of right now and knock on wood, it continues this way. New York is a pretty safe place to be. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I hope that because we, um, experienced so much trauma right at the beginning of this, maybe we're being a little bit rewarded, um, that it's, you know, not a hellscape out there anymore. And I can like walk around the block and it doesn't feel like my life is quite on, you know, it's not, it's not on fire anymore. Right. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, you guys got the brunt of it out there at the beginning. So I feel like you guys all listened very well to the love gov and, um, (laughs) got rid of it. Which is nice. Now I wish that LA would follow suit, but we'll see how that happens. I hope so. I hope everyone out there is staying safe and wearing a mask and, uh, you know, doing what we can to get through this strange, strange time. Never thought I'd see it in my lifetime, but here we are. (sighs) Yeah, here we are. (laughs) (laughs) So you recently won a bunch of um, Indie Series Awards for your show, Indoor Boys. Yeah, it was so wonderful to have something to celebrate in the midst of all this. Yeah. Um, And we were... um, I made it. It's a show that I made with Wesley Taylor um, mm-hmm. that uh, that anybody can watch for free on YouTube. And uh, if you go to indoorboys.tv, it's um, you can stream it for free. And it's three seasons, and it's funny, and it's touching, and it's all about um, two friends who um, aren't quite clear on their boundaries. So that's, <laughs> that's kind of what the I feel show like. Is. That's like most of our generation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think so. We were really trying to write like an odd couple, but for our sort of uh, millennial, uh, you know, uh, queer, you know, th- 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 with through that lens. Yeah. So, uh, you know, so I, I love it. Yeah, we were really excited to to win awards, and so a few of our actors won. It, it was really mm-hmm. so special that we got to celebrate and you know see um, to feel a moment of success and all this. Yeah, moment of. Uh, the- what am I looking for? I don't know. <laughs> what, what, Can't use the word. Us, what are any of us looking for? You know, really? what, truly. But yeah. I love Indoor Boys. You have some major like Broadway heavy hitters on that show, too. Yeah. They're, uh, thank, oh, first off, thank you. And um, and yes, the cast is so wonderful. I, we got very lucky with the people who were willing to get in the sandbox and play with us. And and uh, I mean, the, the two women who play our mothers, Vianna Cox and Carolee Carmelo, they're two mm-hmm. Broadway staples and totally and and also I mean so many wonderful people have been on the show Noah Galvin was on it Frankie Grande is Mm -hmm. uh he's he's been on it a number of times Eric Bergen um 
Krista Rodriguez, so many uh, fantastic people. So I think that's part of the fun of the show is um, seeing all these great faces pop up and yeah. everyone, you know, hopefully gets a chance to be funny and play and, and be a part of telling that story. Yeah. Web series are always so fun because I feel like there's such a freedom in making them since you're in charge of them. Yeah. It's also, um, you know, it, it makes it twice as hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, I, like not only were we trying to make sure that we could be good actors in the scene, mm-hmm. but we had to make sure the script was in order and make sure we were good directors and, and make sure everybody was happy on set and, and, uh, and then edit, <laughs> put it all together. I mean, just the number of hats that we were wearing, it was, yeah. it was kind of overwhelming, but I think that, um, on the other side of it, it's one of the things that I'm most proud of because Wes and I worked so hard to make this thing. And so we're, um, I, I feel proud that we actually got to the other side and, and, and did it. And, and that people seem to be affected. It definitely shows. I mean, that show is really, really well done. And you guys should be super proud of yourselves. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> um, so take me back. How how did you get in this crazy world of acting and writing and directing and all of the above? Oh, gosh. Well, you know, I, I just always knew that I, I, I was just a kid who always loved making things, putting on mm-hmm. plays and writing and and it just kind of never stopped. So it's something I've always loved. I've always loved jumping on stage. Um, and I've always loved, uh, just the, the whole community aspect Mm. of, of, of putting something together. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of kept doing it my whole life. I went to school at Boston university where I was studying acting, but I got to do a lot of theater ensemble stuff and I was putting on shows that I wrote and, and, uh, and I just kind of kept going. I went to New York yeah. and then I spent time in LA and, you know, I mean, I've had a lot of crazy left turns in my life that have taken me in a lot of different <laughs> places, but I think through it all, I've, I've always tried to, um, especially during the times when I wasn't getting cast, like that's how Indra boys came about is Wes mm-hmm. and I were at this point where we were kind of frustrated because we didn't get this job or that job fell through. And, and so we were like, Oh, oh yeah. God, screw it. We're just going to make our own thing and have something to do this month. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I think we just were never content with, um, sitting still. I'm really glad that in West, I found, um, a creative partner who feels similarly and that mm-hmm. we don't want to wait for anyone else to build a road for us, but instead we're just going to kind of build our own road as best we can. And so uh, that's sort of, I mean, you know, that's the bigger picture, I think, of how all of these things came to be. But um, moment to moment, we can talk about those too. <laughs> you know, all the, all the little the stories that happen along the way. Well, I was looking, you know, at um, Wikipedia, the most reliable place on the internet. And what and else is there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was just seeing just your past. And it's amazing to me that you've been able to really focus not only on theater, but television too. You've really been able to make a stance and and have your name heard in both platforms which is kind of unheard of a little bit I feel like in this day and age you either you know are doing film and television or you're doing theater and once in a while the big stars go to Broadway which you know we'll talk about that later if you want but (laughs) Um, but uh it's 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 interesting like you've done Spring Awakening which is one of the best shows ever I love that show oh, and you I did the revival too, yeah. right yeah I did the deaf west revival that incorporated that it was a mix of um deaf and hearing actors and um every moment was a combination of spoken English and um and um signed um ASL wow so it, was, it was really a pretty huge experience um, yeah being, yeah yeah we always felt like um we were these like misfit toys who landed on Broadway <laughs> like y- you know uh, the the idea that to be on Broadway you have to be this kind of person but mm-hmm. but all of these incredible just brilliant smart creative deaf actors got a chance to uh be on Broadway and tell that story and yeah. I'm so um humbled and thrilled to stand beside them and also um have to take on and 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 that I got to be a part of their culture that I Mm -hmm. that I got the opportunity to learn sign language and I was gonna say did you know ASL beforehand or did you learn it for the show you know I knew the alphabet from school (laughs) and growing up and like I knew a couple words I knew how to say crocodile um but no that is the most (laughs) random word to know (laughs) well it was really you know it was just like you stretch your arms out and like make claws with your fingers and (laughs) like that was crocodile so it just really that one stuck with me um (laughs) but uh but 
but no, I, I didn't really know ASL. And, and then being a part of that show, I was also so inundated in, in the deaf culture, which was such an incredible life experience. Mm. So that was a pretty uh, cool, um, it was a pretty cool twist that my life took, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's definitely like a, a crazy, crazy turn. Cause I feel, I mean, have they done a whole lot of deaf productions on Broadway before? No, not many. I mean, there's the very famous play Children of a Lesser God, which has a Mm -hmm. lot of deaf roles in it. And that was originally in like 1980 or so. And then Deaf West previously did a production of Big River on Broadway in 2003-ish. And then uh, their next venture was Spring Awakening in 2015. Um, so there've wow. been, a, yeah, there've been a couple of moments along the way and, uh, and surely there've been some deaf actors here and there in shows, but there have not mm-hmm. been a lot of like truly deaf moments on Broadway mm-hmm. where deaf culture was, there was a spotlight on deaf culture and then by proxy, the, the disabled community. Um, yeah. so it was just really cool to be a part of that and, and, and help, um, tell their stories too. That's that's amazing. What a what an amazing experience to be a part of. Yeah, it was. I mean, we we felt like in the same way that they felt uh, um, that they were challenged to take on dance and music in a way Mm -hmm. that they might not have like that they had to um, they had to um, inhabit this space that has previously just been inhabited by hearing people. But then at the same time, we had to speak two languages. And so all of us were all totally humbled and changed yeah. for it. And then how long uh, between Spring Awakening and Waitress? Uh, let's see. I, Spring Awakening was 2015 into 16. And mm-hmm. then wait, and then I went to Los Angeles. That's okay. when I did uh, Bold and Beautiful for a year. And that's when I started wow. Indoor Boys. Yeah, I spent a year on a soap opera when that was... How was that? You know, it was... Some of it was really great. And some of it was completely bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like couldn't, I don't know. I mean, you know, all is said and done now. So I can kind of speak yeah. honestly about it. That's a world I never fit into. And it was so, so weird that I got that job. But I, <laughs> but I was so thrilled to be there. And I got to work with some really awesome actors. And I was so excited. Mm-hmm. I got to, I was on TV kind of regularly for a mm-hmm. good stretch of time. So it was a, a pretty cool experience, but it was so strange. Like, I, <laughs> Uh, you know, the, the kinds of storylines I was a part of. I, I just, yeah, I do have a lot of respect for people in that world, though, because they work really hard. And mm-hmm. um, oftentimes they're given scenes that uh, um, could be improved. And, <laughs> and then it's that's real- a nice way to say it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I want to be diplomatic. Um, and, <laughs> and then I think uh, those actors have to work really hard to make oh, that yeah. dialogue work. Um, so I think that, uh, I think that the people in that community deserve an enormous amount of respect. Hundred um, percent. I always say that you know, soap actors have the most amazing work skills because they yeah. have to do exactly what you just said, and they have to learn, you know, an entire sixty-page script the night before you film, which is bizarre in its its own oh, right. Oh my god, it was so crazy just the amount of you know and I never had there's maybe only a couple of weeks where I had a lot of material and I was like oh wow Mm. I have to do 20 I have to learn 20 pages a day okay uh I can do this Uh, (laughs) you know there are only a couple times was like that for the most part for me it was manageable because my part was smaller but there were a lot of actors on that show who were truly learning 30 pages a day and do it's wild Yeah, it's just incredible. It's, just, it's a wild, wild, it's like the Wild West out there, man. Yeah, it really is. Um, but, so you uh, did yeah. Bold and the Beautiful, and then you went yeah. back to New York? Yeah, and and okay. I will say, though, I was never bold nor beautiful, but somehow oh. I... No, no, it's okay. But somehow I ended up on that show, and it was just <laughs> so strange. Um, so, um, yeah, so um, after um, they... Uh, I guess, you know, wrote me off did of you, the show. Did you, did you die or did you get, you no, know, did you go to camp? You went no, to I, I, I like went to camp essentially. Yeah. They were like, oh, yeah. he's gone now. He's at camp. And I was, it was yeah. so weird. It was just so I weird. mean, when I was on Days of Our Lives, they sent my character to summer camp and she came back like six years older. So I, what? I feel you. Yeah. No, oh, I was so like, let's recast 12? you. Yeah, I was like 12 and and they sent her 11 something and they sent my character to summer camp and she came back like a full blown 
teenager. <laughs> oh, that is so <laughs> insulting. It is. It's okay. It's okay. I've gotten over it. It's been it's been long enough. Oh gosh, I'm still I still have some wounds from the bold and the beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> you know, that's daytime TV. As a podcast network, our first priority has always been audio and the stories we're able to share with you. But we also sell merch. And organizing that was made both possible and easy with Shopify. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell and grow at every stage of your business. From the launch your online shop stage, all the way to the did we just hit a million orders stage. Whether you're selling scented soap or offering outdoor outfits, Shopify helps you sell everywhere. They have an all-in-one e-commerce platform and in-person POS system, so wherever and whatever you're selling, Shopify's got you covered. With the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms, Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers. Shopify has allowed us to share something tangible with the podcast community we've built here, selling our beanies, sweatshirts, and mugs to fans of our shows without taking up too much time from all the other work we do to bring you even more great content. And it's not just us. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. Shopify is also the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Because businesses that grow grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash realm, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash R-E-A-L-M now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash realm. You can shop from anywhere doing pretty much anything. You might shop while working, eating, or even listening to this podcast. And however you shop, we all know and love the thrill of the hunt. But do you also know how to get the thrill of the best deals? Because Rakuten shoppers do. With Rakuten, they get the deals they love with the most savings and cash back. And you can get it too. Start getting cash back at your favorite stores like Sephora, Nike, and even Expedia if you're looking to get some travel in. And getting cash back doesn't mean you have to miss out on sales because those can just be stacked right on top. It's easy to use and based on a simple idea. Stores pay Rakuten for sending them shoppers and Rakuten shares the money with you as cash back through PayPal or check. Download the free Rakuten app and never miss a deal. Or go to Rakuten.com to start getting the most bang for your buck. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N. So you go back to New York and and how long until you're on you're doing waitress because that's a great yeah, show too. It was um that was so fun. Um and uh I went back uh in the summer of 2018 and then mm-hmm. in the fall I was wait was it 2018? Hold on. <laughs> Time I, doesn't exist anymore so it's oh okay. My God, I don't know. Yeah, I think it was in the summer of 2018. I think I after Bold and Beautiful had um had sent me off to summer camp. I, uh, then I, I (laughs) decided I was going to make a move back to New York. And I think at that point, then Wes and I had done our second season of indoor boys, Mm -hmm. which I flew back to New York to do. But then when that was said and done, I was just like, all right, you know what? I feel like New York is more my home anyway. Mm -hmm. Um, so I went back and I think the day after I got back, I auditioned for that show and then what? I know. And then a couple months later, um, I was I, I did a three month run of waitress on Broadway. Wow. What yeah. a it was a nice what a coincidence. Gift. It was just, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're supposed to be here. FYI. Yeah. Yeah. It was a really nice uh, affirmation from the universe that I had made the right move back to New York. Mm-hmm. Um, that being said, I can assure the listeners that not all things have gone well in my life. And there are so, so many things that did not <laughs> happen that I did not get times when I was like left unemployed and miserable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I, um, but I, but that was one of the times when uh, the stars aligned and I got to do something really cool and be a part of another show that, was uh, a great little community to be a part of. And I did it with Al Roker and he's awesome. No way. You did it with Al Roker? Yes. He's the coolest person oh in the world. Oh my God. No, amazing. One, yeah, no one's nicer. No one has ever been nicer than Al Roker. 
Oh my so, gosh, what yeah. a dream! Who was playing Jenna when you were when you were doing that? Uh, Nicolette Robinson, who is so brilliant. Her husband is Leslie Odom Jr., who you just oh my told god, me, yeah, who you watched this morning in Hamilton. Yes, his book is on my bookshelf. <laughs> oh great! Well, yeah, his wife Nicolette, who is just as talented in her own right. My goodness, she's breathtaking, and wow. she played Jenna. Yeah, she was awesome, and she was—I think she was the first. She was the first uh, black Jenna in the show, which was. I really... think I remember reading about that. That's super cool. Yeah, it was. It was. It was really. I was really happy to do the show when she was doing it. You're in all of these very significant Broadway moments. Do you understand that? No, <laughs> yeah. I don't understand that because <laughs> I don't understand that because you know I'm just in my quarantine and like <laughs> trying to survive. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. (laughs) Yeah. All right. So the point of the show is that we tell um, either heartbreaking or, you know, great stories, things that end up good, Uh, either works for me. But do you have a story that you'd like to share? Well, here I I can think of this. Here's one. Um, Okay. (laughs) This is uh, uh, I was this was like 2014 or something. Mm -hmm. And this is not some giant role, but it was a significant event in my life I think I was kind of in a rough place because I had like just gone through a breakup and I was feeling a little Oof. vulnerable and all that and I was <laughs> feeling like gosh I can't get I can't get arrested in New York um <laughs> and uh maybe that's the wrong phrase to be using these days that phrase might be out of date I was feeling oh, like true. <laughs> I was feeling like I could not uh get an opportunity in New York and I was having a yeah. tough time um, so, uh, so I, uh, uh, I got asked to audition for, and, and, and I am really not a dancer. I'm really just like not very good at it. And oh, I, come on. I'm sure you got some moves. Um, you know, like I can do what's required of me. Like I could do okay. like, okay. It's so like I did wicked for a little while and I, you know, could, um, do like the kind of simple dances that Bach has to do in wicked. Like right. I could barely handle those. But I was asked to audition for um, this new show, uh, Tuck Everlasting, which was on Broadway. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I was told, you know, I was like, they said, please come in for this. This is, um, you know, it's it's a dance call, but this is an invited dance call. I don't know Ooh. why the story's on my mind, but may- I hope this ends up being interesting. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm so sorry for wasting everybody's time. Um but, uh, but every like, story is interesting. You're good. You're good. Okay. Okay. So I, I was asked to come in for Tug Everlasting. It was the invited dance call for like a featured ensemble role. And I was like, okay, sure. Maybe. But like I, I said to my agent at the time, I was like, I'm, you know, I'm really, I'm not a dancer. I, I, I don't know if this is what they want. And they said, no, 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 no. Casting is assuring us like this is an invited uh, essentially a mover's call, you know, you're mm. not going to have to really dance. It's going to be a lot of actors who are asked to move. And these are for featured ensemble roles. Okay. And so I was like, okay, okay. I'm like kind of <laughs> nervous. I'm feeling uncomfortable. Um, uh, but you know what? I'll try. Cause I'm feeling like really low and I have nothing else going on for me. Um, oh, no. <laughs> so, I mean, that's where I was at the time. And so I went in to this audition, I show up and it was essentially me and the cast of Newsies. Oh my God. What what um, <laughs> went down was this complicated ballet dance sequence full of like double and triple pirouettes and leaps. And I was just like crashing and burning. And <laughs> I felt so humiliated. What I should have done was just like leave. I should have just, just sneak been, away. I should have just left, you know, because I, actually couldn't do any of the things they wanted me to do but I still kept being like I can do this I can do this just muscle through if I get through it then maybe they'll see that there's more to me than the fact that I can't do any of these things and well then they were uh they were like okay so now if we uh call your name um then uh that's uh all we need to see for today so I'm just gonna go through the list of names okay Alex Wise (laughs) and I was like oh the only, okay. I'm the only name. I was the only name that they called. No, and they just got rid of you. They just got rid of me. And so I we made the long walk, you know, to the door. Cause of course I was on the other yeah. side of the room and they were long, of course. And I made the long walk to the door and I was just, I felt like my world was crumbling around. I was just so mortified by this oh experience. 
And I was just so confused why I was called in for this thing when it was clearly not a mover's <laughs> call. Like, what were they to gain by bringing me, a non-dancer, in for this show? So that night, I was like, I cannot handle this anymore. I am going to lose my mind. And I booked a plane ticket to Los Angeles. And I left the next no. day. And I stayed for a year. <laughs> <laughs> Tuck Everlasting got you to leave New York City. That's amazing. Yeah, I left New York City because of Tuck Everlasting because um, they shattered my spirit. Um, <laughs> no disrespect to anybody on that team. They're all very <laughs> lovely people. And I actually enjoyed the show. I ended up seeing it. Um, but but oh that, my God. Yeah, that killed my spirit so much that I, I moved to Los Angeles. And that's how I started doing television. <laughs> oh my God. It reminds me, did you ever watch Friends, that episode where Joe he goes in for a Broadway audition and he like has to figure out how to dance no oh my gosh I don't remember this one I mean I've sure I've oh seen it but God. I haven't done a rewatch in some time I have to find that you have to watch just that episode because I just picture you doing exactly what Joey was doing in that episode and I'm literally crying right oh. now <laughs> <laughs> oh so gosh oh, oh well, I'd I, be totally I, screwed too yeah yeah I mean I sure felt like crying yeah, I I mean, I'm proud of you for sticking that out, though, because I would have seen that said, I am so sorry. Goodbye. No, but see, I think there's a real power in that. Like what I should have done was known what my strengths and limitations are, owned that and proceeded as such. But instead, <laughs> I was trying to pretend I was a person I was not. And so I needed to go to L.A. to, quote unquote, find myself. <laughs> oh, my God, this is not the place to find yourself. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. But, you know, I, I still discovered some things, you know, did some jobs. It was OK. It was yeah. a good move to make at the time. I love that. Oh, my gosh. Tuck Everlasting killed you. Yeah, that was they, it. They killed me. That was that was. Uh, yeah, that was wow. ruined my soul. <laughs> yeah. What a story. Did you ever see those casting directors again? Mm. <laughs> you know what? I'm sure I did because Broadway okay. is a small. I'm just, I can't remember who was casting it, but I am sure I went in for them again because they're only, it's unlike LA where there are just hundreds of casting directors mm -hmm. doing so many various projects. Broadway is a much more like, there are four casting directors that you go right. in for. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a little bit more of like a, insider club to its um maybe mm. to to its uh, uh disadvantage yeah they have some serious gatekeepers over there yeah they do yeah yeah and that's you know help me and hurt me I'm so curious to why they brought you in did you ever figure it out or did your no. reps ever figure it out it's crazy it's just crazy <laughs> like what you know but but now I've gotten a lot better about um, I've learned from that experience and to be mm. honest, other experiences have had like that where, you know, I was up for another show and they said, okay, so now, uh, just come in to, you did great at the audition. Now mm -hmm. come in tomorrow to the callback and bring your tap shoes. And I oh, said, no. and a good day to you. I will not be in your show. <laughs> <laughs> See you later. Yeah. But I'm not gonna, I, I know now I, I, I know now what I should be putting myself on the line for and some things it's just not going to be to anyone's advantage to pretend I'm somebody I'm not, you know, it's true. It's true. But you know, we did get that great story out of it. So I'm glad you did at that time. <laughs> yeah. You know, Hey, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm glad that I could save it for your podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, so what are you doing now? Like what's, what's on the books after quarantine? Do you have anything figured out? Well, sort of I mean you know everything is a question mark now but uh mm -hmm. let's see in terms of uh well I, I have a couple of writing projects I've been working on so That's Wes good. Taylor and I who wrote uh, uh we wrote Indoor Voice together we um during this time we wrote a new play and mm. so we're gonna try to make that happen in the coming years we hope and I have a musical that I've been writing for um for the last year and that wow. one, that one uh, is, uh, you know, I was working on that, like right before I, I got on the line with you. Um, that one is, uh, we have a producer on that one. And that one, it was scheduled to happen this summer, um, but uh, off Broadway. 
Uh, now it is going to happen, you know, in the winter, in the spring. No one can, it comes back, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no one can really say. But I think the next thing I'm doing is uh, this new musical that I've written. And I would tell you the title, but I think as of last night, it's changing. So <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, but it's, but I'm writing it with Ben Fankhauser, who, um, speaking of Newsies at my audition, uh, Ben was um, in Newsies. And oh, wow. uh, yeah, yeah, he's, but he's uh, an amazing uh, collaborator on that and a great uh, actor. So we're going to be in that together and we're writing Fun. it together. And it's this little off Broadway musical that I hope will make people very happy when uh, we get we to show it, it to them down the road yeah thanks i'm definitely going to come out and see that I love oh seeing thanks those. and it's one of the things that i'm missing the most right now is like going to see live theater and musicals oh, gosh you know i i do i do hope that this time has made everybody even more appreciative of what we had mm-hmm. and even for me someone who's been so um immersed in the theater even i uh in these months leading up to this event in our lives i was feeling like oh i cannot go see another broadway show i am just so <laughs> tired of seeing all this theater you know seeing things constantly but now i know that the next time i walk into a theater i will just burst into tears because oh yeah it's going to be a very cathartic moment oh big time yeah because now Everyone's i i yeah, we. I think, I think this time, and not just theater, but so many things. I think we can all kind of take stock and appreciate the things that are really important to us in our life and life, mm-hmm. and figure out what's really, what really matters. You know. Totally. So. I think it's been an interesting break for everybody who's involved in you know entertainment and performing arts because usually we're so busy and hustling so hard that it's hard to take those moments and now we've all been forced to just sit here with ourselves and we're like wait what yeah (laughs) what do I do (laughs) we really have to look in the mirror and figure out okay what works what doesn't work who you know what's the kind of person I want to be all these things and and how much did I take for granted walking into a theater or walking into a movie theater or getting to be on a set or something I, totally. I, you know, if I ever took those things for granted, I just want to promise myself I will never take those things for granted ever again. Oh, that's very sweet. Well, just trying to, you know, do my best. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Where can um, people follow you on social media? Oh, well, thank you for having me. And yeah, on Twitter, I am at Alex Wise. That's W-Y-S-E. And uh, uh, Instagram, I'm at Alex J. Wise. So awesome. Thank you so much. It was so nice speaking with you. You too. Thank you so much, Jillian. Thanks again to Alex Weiss for coming on the show. He's just so sweet and so genuine. Um, I, I love you, Alex. Thanks so much. Next week on the show, we have my childhood friend Shelby Young on the show. You may know her as Princess Leia in Star Wars Forces of Destiny or maybe her iconic role in American Horror Story. We have an awesome conversation about finding yourself in the business and how your career can lead to new paths you never even thought of. And I really enjoyed speaking with her. So tune in next week. Until then, make sure to subscribe to the show wherever you're listening to it right now. You can also follow us on social media. Make sure to tell your friends, your family, your dog, your parrot, whoever you want about the show. And as always, thanks for coming in. Talmur is my home. My family have worked the land for generations. My gran says the island does not belong to us, but we belong to the island. And we must be ready, for a great evil is coming, and death follows with it. Listen and subscribe to the latest season of Undertow, The Harrowing, a story glass production presented by Realm, available wherever you get your podcasts. Contained herein are the heresies of Radolf Buntwine, erstwhile monk turned traveling medical investigator. Join me as I study the secrets of the divine plagues and uncover the blasphemous truth that ours is not a loving God and we are not its favored children. The Heresies of Radolf Buntwine, wherever podcasts are available.